All right, uh, first thing I want you to look at is at the bottom, just at the grass line there, you see a little flickering at the base of the weeds. Not sure precisely what that is. It doesn't seem to be the once a second or every 30 frame artifact that we've seen before. Okay, everybody, uh, this is uh, my follow-on video um, on the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. And the previous video was the uh, new firmware and close encounter video. And I used DCINE like in that um, video. The one before that was uh, the flight and video tutorial. And again, I used DCINE like in that. Uh, and then the first one that I did, the first flight video I did with the Fanta 4 Pro was the video that you that I've called video problems and in that I used D-Log as a color profile and I had some substantial problems. You'll notice over there that was the formation that you saw in the previous video and in the bottom right corner of the video you see um, a video of the Lumetri scope and histogram for this video so you can see what's going on during the video. Uh, so in this video again I'm using D-Log but unlike the first video I did with D-Log, the video problems video, I don't have blown highlights. This is, you know, good quality video. It's nice color, the detail is good, and I don't have blown highlights. And the reason for that is I didn't use D-Log to determine the exposure. You can't really do uh, determine exposure properly if you're using D-Log to try to, to, to try to determine it. I had to use DCINE like, which was the video profile I used for the previous flight. So from that previous flight, I was able to determine a good exposure. And I only had to tweak the exposure a little bit because it was a little later in the day and a little darker. So I uh, reduced the shutter speed from 1 1,000th of a second to 1 over 640. So a little higher exposure, but that was because a little later in the day, and a little darker. But I think you can see that the exposure is good. Even the snow in the top right corner isn't blown out. So the exposure is good. The detail is good. Color is good. So if you get the exposure right with D-Log, it can work out. Uh, and this was filmed with the new um, firmware, which came out at on the 9th of December. This was flown on the 11th of December. So this is with the new firmware. Uh, I don't know that the D-Log profile was changed at all, but they did change the other color profiles quite a bit. Uh, if you look in the histogram, you'll see that there's a little bit of pulsing once a second. I think that's the shadow detail of the on the right It's not horrendous, but I think with the uh, D-Log profile, because you have to do contrast stretching in post, and this has been processed to stretch the contrast, um, because you have to do that, it exaggerates the flickering effect a little bit. So you see a little bit of flickering in the, in the shadow detail itself, and you can see that in the histogram as well. All right, so I'm flying along here, and that valley right ahead of us is really neat looking. I'm going to have to come back to this place. Uh, of course, right now it's all covered with snow, so I'm probably going to have to wait till springtime. But that looks like a pretty neat place to further explore. I'll definitely have to come back. you also notice there's a couple of vehicles there, and they were target shooting, or I don't know if these guys were per se, but people in the area were target shooting. So I didn't want to fly over them. Not a good idea anyway, so... Pretty quickly here, I bank a 90 degree left turn and head pretty much due north. But again, definitely want to come back to this valley in the springtime. Looks pretty neat. Okay, so heading north now pretty much north. And once again you can see some vehicles on I-80. 
just as in the previous video. And once again, we're about three or four miles away from I-80 at this point. And directly past that, that kind of silvery thing, that's uh, the Great Salt Lake. It's very shallow at this point. Uh, this was a little later in the day, about half an hour after the previous video, and the uh, cirrus clouds, which are in the sky here, were a little bit heavier, so uh, it obscured the sun a little bit more. And the other thing with cirrus clouds is that it tends to suck the color out of the video, or still pictures for that matter. Of course, you can compensate in post, uh, increasing the saturation, so it's not really a problem. But, you know, just visually, it does tend to suck the color out. I think it absorbs the red and green end of the spectrum a little bit more than the blue. So, flying along here, and there's two more vehicles, uh, that kind of white pickup truck and pretty close to us, and then a darker vehicle a little further along the road dirt road there so once again I didn't want to fly in front of them in case they took a pot shot at me so I bank another 90 degree left turn here in a second to um, avoid flying in front of them and again there's that formation from the previous video and you can see it's a little darker now, a little later in the day. Uh, when I made the 90 degree turn there, the horizon got a little bit tilted. Not much, but a little bit. When you make a quick turn, that's um, a not uncommon thing to happen. But you'll notice it didn't take very long flying straight and level for that to even itself out. So uh, you want to make as shallow or gentle a turn as possible and not be turning constantly because that will screw up your horizon. So the quick turn gave it a little bit of a tweak, but it's, it's not a problem now. You'll notice about a third of the way from the top of those mountains are kind of a, a linear feature horizontally. That, I believe, is one of the ancient shorelines of the former Lake Bonneville, of which the Great Salt Lake is a remnant. On the right-hand side, and just left of that winding dirt road, you'll see some black specks. Those are cows. Yes, this is free-range territory. Looks like they're nicely munching along, enjoying themselves. It's not a bad life being a free-range cow until you become somebody's dinner. Then it kind of sucks. All right, so um, my take here is, you know, here's D-Log. I had great problems with D-Log in the, in the first video. But the major problem, I think, is getting the exposure right. And the problem is when you have D-Log as your color profile, color profile while you're, you're flying or trying to set your exposure, everything is so washed out. You know, it's tough enough to see the screen um, in, under normal conditions because of the daylight you're kind of washing the screen out. Add in the graying effect of, of D-Log and it makes it nearly impossible to critically determine exposure or focus for that matter when you have D-Log as your active color profile. So what you need to do, at least in my opinion, is 
temporarily go to like none or decini like color profile and then use that to determine your exposure and lock that in manually use fully manual exposure and once you've got that then you can switch back to D-Log and you have set your exposure and you just leave it as it is. So I think you can get good quality video with D-Log. I don't know if we're losing data here. I, I, I'm not confident that, that DJI is doing things the way they're supposed to. But if you get the exposure right and then switch into D-Log, uh, you can get good video. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the video here, and I appreciate everybody for watching, so thank you very much.